Muslims in a village in Pakistan go on a rampage, injuring 18 Christians and killing one woman. That's where we begin our World Watch report. This woman, Shakila Bibi, was martyred for her faith in her predominantly Muslim village. The Voice of the Martyrs reports that on March the 2nd, the Muslims entered the homes of all the Christian families in the village. They severely beat the believers. They also vandalized the United Presbyterian Church, breaking windows and toppling the cross. The village has a history of persecuting Christians. One of the suspe suspected attackers has been arrested. And this Sunday is the global day of prayer for Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. Years of civil war between government forces and ethnic groups, many of them Christians, have left millions homeless. On top of this, many in Myanmar are still struggling to recover from Cyclone Nargis. The cyclone struck the country nearly a year ago and killed more than 130,000 people. Christians concerned for Burma is asking believers to pray for freedom, peace, relief and revival to spread throughout the country. A top Vatican official says the Catholic Church believes there is room for evolution and faith in God the Creator. Cardinal William Joseph Lovata made his comments during a conference at the Vatican on evolution and Darwinism. The conference marks the 150th anniversary of Charles Darwin's The Origin of the Species. Our beliefs, of course, uh, uh, hold to uh, the belief in creation. We believe that, um, however, creation has come about and evolved that uh, uh, ultimately God is the creator of all things. Lovato went on to say the atheist notion that evolution proves there is no God is quote absurd. Vatican officials also say intelligent design is not science and that teaching it alongside evolution in schools only creates confusion. In the United Kingdom, a Christian policeman there has been fired for protesting the forces' promotion of homosexuality. Graham Cogman says he has been disciplined and harassed in the past for objecting to Gay History Month. Well, last year he posted a link on the police intranet site for, to a Christian webpage that offered prayer for homosexuals. A board of inquiry deemed the site homophobic and said Cogman was intolerant. I spoke by Skype with Constable Cogman and Andrea Williams of the Christian Legal Center about the case. Are Christians at the police force discriminated against? Is there a, a bias, a, a very blatant bias against them? I, I believe there is, and this is the main issue uh, of what I did. It wasn't um, having a, a go at anybody in particular. I just felt that the the whole system had become unbalanced and I was just trying to to put across the faith Christian viewpoint just to to gain some balance but unfortunately it wasn't uh, accepted like that. These cases seems to be uh, seem to be happening more and more in the UK. What, what's going on here? Yes, literally not a day goes by when we don't get a call from someone who's suffering the kinds of censorship and oppression that you see Graham Cogman um, suffering and enduring. And indeed, this kind of suffering comes as a result of what sounds like something that should be good, equality and diversity legislation, human rights legislation. But what this, act this legislation does is prohibit true discussion in the workplace. The Christian Legal Center is appealing Cogsman, uh, Cogsman's uh, dismissal. When people hear of the small town of Nokia, Finland, they normally think of one thing, cell phones. Yeah, they make some very good cell phones, <laughs> by the way. Yes, Nokia is the birthplace of the major cell phone giant, but in Finland's religious circles, cell phones take a backseat to more important happenings in Nokia. It's being called the Nokia Revival. On any Sunday, people pack worship services all over Finland to worship and seek healing from God. This revival started over 18 years ago when Pastor Marku Koivisto experienced a miracle. Through much prayer, he was cured of cancer and got a new calling to share his story and lead the people of Finland to Christ. His story inspired and energized the nation. People came all over Finland because they, they, they experienced uh, healing, they experienced the uh, presence of the Lord. 
The revival was so successful, he started his own church, Nokia Missio. The church now has locations in five of Finland's largest cities. We feel that God has really uh, called us to pray for people and, and, and our main thing is to ask people to receive Christ. Nokia Missio has helped more than 15,000 people to make that decision. That's a huge number considering the total population in Finland is only 5 million. And for two years ago I came here to Tampere and my, my life has totally changed. For now I can say that I'm, I'm free for those things which I was abandoned, using alcohol and stuff like that very strongly. But now, now I'm not. <laughs> Nokia Missio is also spreading beyond Finland's borders. The church has started Christian schools in Albania and India, and it opened a healing house in Israel for people with drug addictions. Koivisto has plans to spread their message even farther. We have plans for, uh, to go to Estonia, and then we have plans to go to uh, uh, Sweden, also to, to North America. The Nokia Mission is also streaming their services live on the Internet. You can find the link at our website, cwnews.org.